So I let my brake pads get way too low, and in an effort to learn more about this bike, I'm going to document on how to replace them. It should be a pretty simple task. I've taken this rear tire off enough times to know, and I will show you guys how to do so as well. Things you'll need. Um, you will need hammer, Phillips screwdriver, well not Phillips, uh, standard screwdriver it's for the axle, um, center stand for your rear tire, torque wrench, and torque wrench, and uh, let's see what was it, 8 millimeter socket, and a one, four, one and one fourth or 32 millimeter socket, so, oh and brake pads obviously, so let's get started. Another thing I forgot to mention is lighting, lighting is very important. Don't forget to have a spotlight. And if you have any other sources of light, use that. Let's see. Like, for instance, the spotlight on here. Okay, so first steps. I put it on the center stand. Go get some spools wherever you want. I got these online for like 10 bucks. Take the rear set stand, put one end on, and lift the bike up. So you can get the other one on, and then just press down. Simple enough, right? <clears throat> Second step, we are going to have to remove the rear axle nut. In order to get to the brake pad, well, the brakes itself. So get your one and one fourth or 32 millimeter, I believe, if the correct thing, and get a breaker bar. Thankfully, this thing doubles as a breaker bar. It's got a little switch. And just like start. I like to pull up, but it's probably safer to go down. Put it on there. And just loosen it. Okay, that's loose enough. There we go. Now we need to find something to prop the rear tire up, because it's going to be a lot easier to get that axle out if it's propped up. So I have something somewhere that's like exactly the right size. So you can now be able to find it up oh, there. It is. So I got this little tackle box, and a tackle box and a towel is pretty much the exact same height for the tire. So I can just take the tackle box and uh, wrap it. Place it under the tire. Wrap it 20 times. There we go. Place it under the tire like so. And the frame. Now, scoot it back a little bit. There we go. And now we just go through the process of removing the bolt, and it's a little tight still. So, just remove the bolt. That's You got your nut here, and a washer, and then space. Put it in the order, you're going to put it back together. That way you know exactly where everything goes. Then we've got the other side. Nothing here, really. Adjust this down so you can see. There we go. Alright, so this side has just the spacer, and that is it. So what we will do is I will show you what we need to do on this side. So this is where the hammer and the flathead come into play. Simply place the flathead on one side and hit the hammer. Very lightly tap it. Hey look, the handle is the same size as the hole. Brilliant. Okay. So, now you can see the axle is out, and just to remove it, pull it out. That's why this being perfect height is the best, is the reason that you want it to be that way, because if it's too high or too low, the weight's going to make the axle almost impossible to get out. So, push that forward as much as you can, grab the chain from the top, pull, 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 and let it rest. I don't like scratching things, so... Okay, so now you can just 
folded that or have There's these things. Don't lose them. They're very important. But now let's get to the hard part. Well, this is what I think is the hard part. Sorry, let me readjust this. There we go. Um, brake. Hate it. Because you can't pull it all the way out because it hits against the rim. So as you move this, you gotta pull this out. Actually came out way easier than usual. But let me get this tire all the way out. Okay. Set the tire gently down on another towel. And let's get the camera in here. So the, the brake itself, you see. Okay. Brake itself runs in this little rail here. And then the bolt or the uh, axle goes through here. So that's really all it's holding us in. It just. There goes the slides. It sits right there. Bolt goes through. And that's what holds your caliper on. Looks like this means. There we go. Okay. So now let's go get our 8mm and finish this up. Another thing to your list of things that you need hydration. Okay. So, I forgot to depress this too. Ugh. So, here's your first one. And you see there's no pad there, and that's terrible. And then your second one just comes out. They're, they go into little divots in there. And then, I'll show you. So now, camera. Whee! Focus. There we go. So this bolt is holding the. This bolt is holding the brake pads. So, 8 millimeter. There we go. Twist this out. And here's my bad brake pads that actually have nothing left. Well, microscopic left. Check that out. Let me focus on it. Yeah, there we go. So, there's nothing left on this brake pad. And unfortunately, I didn't check, so I'm probably gonna have to buy a new rotor because of my mistakes. So check your brake pads often. Let's put it back on this side so you get a better view. Make sure you're in focus. You're not. Okay. So you can see in here, this is your caliper, and you'll have to squish it back in. Use manhandling powers to do so. Alright, so if you look inside, this side is your carrier side and this side is your bolt side. So the spring tension is little clips right here and right here. This thing. Right, it came out. There you go. <laughs> so this thing's what holds your brakes in. <laughs> and so there's a, it just goes right back here. But there's little itty bitty tabs and that's what holds these in place. So let's put that right in there. That's what it was. Move this thing all the way out. Or not. Move it all the way in. Oh, okay. Now it sits in there perfectly. Okay, so load it like a gun. And then put the first pin in. There we go. That's what it was. Okay. And then take it. See, now, you, now this metal, this thing is all one piece. And then it just sits in there. And then spring load it up, put that over there, and then tighten it. Excellent. I'll give that a final tighten once the pin's on. So now that we've gapped this enough, which is awesome, you should be able to slide right back in. So, put it back in the rail. Actually, don't do that. That's, 
Because when we go put the tire back on, we have to take it off anyway. So set this over here gently so you don't scratch anything. Roll your big tire back. Center. All right, so let's put the rear end back on. So we got the tire set. What we need to do is we need to get on that rail. So start it on the rail, and then put, put the rotor in between, slide it forward. Now you see, there we go. You want this to be all the way clear. Switch sides here again, and let's put the chain back on. Real simple, especially when you got the space up here. So that washer fell out. You gotta make sure those stay in. Just pull the chain, pull, pull back as much as you can. Well, the chain's keeping me from doing it, so put the little spacer back in. There we go. Slide it forward. Make sure both of those washers are still there. Move the chain. Slide it forward enough so you can reset this chain. There we go. Slide back again. Okay. Relube. So I don't have the exact grease that you're supposed to use. I've got a little bit thicker multi purpose grease from Ford. So I used to have a Lincoln. I'm just going to give it a good grease. I put on really thin because you're not supposed to. When I bought the bike, it was pretty much clean. So I assume these things are pretty tolerant. So thinner the better, as long as it's thick grease. So the way that I usually find out which side's right is there's a little, there's a little EB mark where the bolts rubbed against the metal. shake since it's exact right height it goes right through without problems right pull back just enough so you can get this washer you might not be able to get it back you might have to reset your tension let's see if I can there we go finish this off Rotate it just a little bit. Oh, too much, too much. There we go. It's perfect. Put the other side here again. And we'll put the washer back on since that's the order we set it down. Not the washer, but the box here. Washer and bolt. Now I almost put it on the wrong way. See the flat spot and then the rounded spot. Flat spot touches this side. All right, turn crunch time. Put it on the on mode. Set it to 85. It's upside down. Set it to 85. on there tight. There's no wobble. Okay, I'm gonna take the, the brick thing out. My grease bag is clean. Okay, shit everywhere. Make sure you got no travel. Um, what I'm doing right now is this hose. I put it so it's right on the rim. I sit still and I spin it and I make sure it doesn't wobble. So that's good. And we'll tighten it down. Okay. There it is. One click. Don't do it more than once. So you can see it's not in the best shape. 
Maybe next paycheck. I have to buy new brake pads and <laughs> a new perimeter. Okay, so last step, most important step is see how there's a gap between your brakes. All you have to do to fix that is tap on your rear brake a couple times until it sets in. Push down hard. And now it's rubbing again. And brake works. Perfect. Well, hope this helped you guys because it's helped me a lot. Be safe.